Welcome everyone back to weekly weather updates and in today's video we have a look at the latest on Storm Dudley and Storm Eunice which is going to be battering the UK over the next few days. Very stormy period coming up. We have amber warnings in force for wind um, and yellow warnings in for wind as well and I do suspect we will be seeing further warnings put in force as at the moment the Met Office really only have confidence in Dudley tomorrow and Eunice into Friday morning. Still a lot of uncertainty on its track and that's why we we haven't seen an upgrade in warnings today uh, but I do think we will be seeing amber warnings and put in force for wind and potentially some weather warnings in for snow as well as it does look like we're going to be seeing some colder air interacting with Stormy Nice bringing the potential for heavy snow and blizzards for some so very severe conditions coming up in the next few days so make sure you do stay tuned keep an eye on the warnings and do stay safe out there so do remember if you enjoy my videos make sure to like and subscribe and remember to follow on twitter as well the links in the description now if we do start by having a look at the live radar you can see we have a weather front spreading in uh, or it's clearing sorry from the east still a bit of squally rain down in the london area and into the southeast uh, but it has delivered quite a bit of rain to pretty much all areas um, earlier today and you can see another weather front approaching in from the far west coming into ireland northern ireland and we'll be entering wales and southwest england very soon some wintry showers across scotland and that is a sign of things to come as it's going to be turning colder over the next few days could be quite a mild day in the south tomorrow maybe mid-teens um, but towards the end of the week it's going to be much colder and that's where we see the risk of snow and more widespread ice and frost risks um but we're just gonna be seeing repeat repeated bouts of weather fronts heavy rain wind um, and potentially wintriness as well coming in from the west with storm dudley arriving tomorrow afternoon and storm Eunice into friday morning now if you have a look at the latest weather warnings now we only have an amber warning in force on wednesday now because the met office have moved the start time for the amber warning for dudley to a little bit earlier um, and have have the end point a little bit earlier as well so we do have a look at that amber warning from 4 p.m tomorrow until midnight so not a massively long warning 10 hours um it's not stretching across two days but it will affect the commute home for many people through wednesday and could bring some severe impacts through the evening as well um and if we do have a look at the further details again 70 80 mile per hour in land 80 in a few places and 80 to 90 across exposed coast and hills for a time you can see high impact high likelihood the potential of it going to a red but at this stage i think considering we're a day out um, i do not see a red warning being put in force for dudley however eunice there's still the potential as we don't have um precise um can, uh, precise uh, idea of its exact track if you look at the yellow warning again similar warning in terms of 60 70 80 90 miles per hour gusts but not as high likelihood and you can see that in the impact matrix drop down likelihood so in the yellow warning still the potential for very strong winds but just not quite as likely so even if you are in the yellow warning that's spreading into northern northern wales the midlands northern ireland and a lot of scotland as well we could still be seeing very strong gusts there you're not out of the woods just because you're only in the yellow warning zone but the main impact zone of course will be in the amber warning where the highest likelihood is over northern england and southern scotland and the tip of northern ireland through thursday we still have that yet widespread yellow warning for storm dudley and it expires at 6 a.m in the morning and then friday we have a widespread warning in for storm eunice from midnight until 9 p.m so a very long warning 21 hours uh that warning lasts so i do suspect it will be cut up a little bit we will be seeing some ambers put in for that um as again it's all very uncertain to see it hasn't hasn't been updated since yesterday as the met office is obviously holding back um, because of the uncertainty but again 60 70 maybe 80 or even higher than that and there is the potential for blizzards high impact low likelihood so again if we do see that likelihood increase with the same impacts uh, when this warning was issued yesterday we could be seeing red warnings but at this stage, I'll put a low likelihood with that. But it is possible um, heading into later this week. Now, if we do have a look at the shorter range models, we're going to start off with ha have a look at the UK Met Office run. Then we'll go have a look at the Icon. And then we'll also have a look at the GFS as well. Um, have a look at what the precipitation and wind gusts as well. Now, you can see that precipitation band moving through earlier today. And then we've got another weather front pushing in 
this evening into tomorrow morning, a bit of snow over the Scottish hills, and then we see Storm Dudley arriving through early hours of Wednesday. You can see the weather front pushed through around three, four, five, uh, around 2, 3, 4 p.m., but it's really once that clears and we get into a real gusty westerly wind, that's where we're going to see the strongest gusts actually behind the weather front in the squally rain band. You can see some real squally winds um, and squally showers. Could be even some convection, some deep convection with that. So I have seen a small risk um, from Toro, um, which uh, a Twitter account that have a look at convection risks. They've said there's a small chance of seeing maybe some funnel clouds, maybe some tornadoes, simply because of the instability there. So there is some big risk, or there are some risks from these convective showers within the squally winds. Eventually it does clear through, things just start to die away, a few showers around, and then as we head into Thursday night, into Friday, Stormy Anise arrives, and you can see heavy snow over Northern Ireland and parts of Northern England, over the high ground mainly before turning mostly to snow across northern England and southern Scotland. Rain elsewhere and those really strong winds and then eventually it moves away. So that track has the centre of the low going through the Midlands. So north Midlands, northern England, snow. To the south, very strong winds. As that clear through, we do go into a much colder air mass. So you see some winter showers for quite a few in the north and west. Before eventually you see more weather fronts push in and things turn a little bit milder in the south. So we do have a look at the max temperatures, uh, and then we'll have a look at the wind gusts and go through the other models. Um, today, temperatures, not too bad, 7, 8 degrees, but around average, really. Further north, it's a bit, much, quite a bit colder, actually, near single digits. But tomorrow, as I said, could be quite mild, especially in the south, 14, 15 degrees possible. Further northwards in Scotland, around freezing. Um, and that's the signs of things to come with that cold air lingering to our north. And eventually... Those things that clears through. So for Storm Dudley, it's actually going to be quite mild in the south. Quite a big, mild sector. But through Thursday, temperatures are dropping. Thursday afternoon, only 7, 8, 9 degrees in the south. Around 3, 4 degrees widely further northwards. And then through early hours of Friday, you see a big, mild sector. But around freezing across northern England, northern Ireland. And you can see that big boundary. 10 degrees, perhaps, near Nottingham, near North Midlands. And it's northern England, near Newcastle, freezing. So big temperature contrasts. Um, so that rain snow line it is going to be uh, very very localized some areas 10 miles away from you may get heavy snow others may just see heavy rain so yeah a lot of uncertainty with this and again all depends on the exact track of the low and beyond that things turn much colder for all through friday evening to saturday with a widespread frost for a mild set to push through through saturday and into sunday now, if we do have a look at the wind gusts this is what's going to be the most damaging impact i suspect from these storms now you can see nothing too crazy at the moment, but as we head through to tomorrow, you can see those there's strong gusts with the weather front pushing through tonight, but the real winds arrive through Wednesday afternoon, 60, 70, 80 mile per hour gusts, really quite extreme in a few spots and widely 40, 50 miles per hour, and you can see it fairly slowly clears through Wednesday evening and that amber warning will subside, so mainly 60, 70, 80 mile per hour winds, so really strong not exceptional by any means, because of course Storm Arwen we're seeing maybe 90 miles per hour. Um, but with this still 60, 70, 80 mile ra miles per hour, it may deroute some trees, it may take down some power lines, but it could make something quite unstable before we see Storm Eunice arrive through Thursday into Friday and look at those winds. 100 mile per hour winds in southwest England, this could be devastating there especially with the ocean waves the swells could be some coastal flooding and through the london area we could be seeing gusts in excess of 70 potentially even 80 miles per hour widely across southern england as well through the midlands so that wind risk is slightly further southwards than at storm dudley but it could be even more severe um, and that's what we really keep. You need to keep an eye on. Mix with the rain, and eventually it clears. And we still see some strong winds on other days, but only gusting right, maybe 40, 50, 60 miles per hour, not 70, 80, 90 miles per hour inland. That's the thing. It's very easy in this country to get 70 mile per hour gusts on the coast, but inland, that is severe, um, and we could be seeing some damage with this. So please do keep an eye on the warnings. If you do have any loose items outside, garden furniture, do think about potentially putting it away or securing it. Um, and if there's anything that um, could, could blow away or get damaged, make sure you do take some action um, to try uh, and limit any potential damage.
So if you do now have a look at the icon run, see how that does compare. Now, I do want to emphasize that is one run. Things can change, um, and it could be less severe on the icon runs. Uh, so we'll have a look what, what it does show. Now, you can see the weather front moving through earlier. And then tomorrow, you can see it's storm Dudley moving through in the evening, not looking anything to accept really. Big weather front and some convection showers. You can see those sort of streamlines moving in from the west. And that's where we're going to see those really strong winds. Now beyond that, after storm at Dudley moves through, we do see stormy east from the southwest. And you can see as it interacts with the cold air further northwards, heavy snow further southwards than the UK Met Office run. Potentially into parts of North Wales. Midlands, maybe into central England, even maybe even getting to parts of the south over high ground. Again, going to be a very, very big temperature gradient. As I said, 10 degrees in some areas, and then 10 miles away could be two or three with heavy snow. Um, so we've got to keep an eye, of course, on that. Eventually, it clears away, can see some back edge snow more widely through Friday, and then see another weather front snow over higher ground, and that just continues. Now, if we do have a look uh, actually at snow depth, have a look what it's showing today, you can see that snow depth through Friday evening. 5 to 10 centimetres potentially across parts of uh, central England into the Midlands could be quite severe actually um, and again we'll have to see um, exactly how that does play out that band of snow could shift further northwards I doubt it will shift further southwards but it is possible I guess um, but at this stage we're looking at this snow uh, and it could bring some severe impacts and we'll just have to see exactly how it does play out now, if we do have a look at the wind gusts, of course, I said the most impactful um, impactful thing from this, these storms. Now, if we do have a look at Wednesday, you can see that 60, 70, 80 mile per hour gusts, so a bit stronger than actually than the UK Met Office run for Storm Dudley. You can see that amber warning zone across southern Scotland, northern England, 70, 80 miles per hour. And then beyond that, as we do clear through Thursday into early hours of Friday, Wow, look at that, those winds down in the channel, 100 mile per hour winds um, in the channel, not coming quite as far inland, and that is because that centre of the low is further southwards, um, and it's all, uh, and that's shifting everything further southwards, that's why the snow's further southwards, and these strong winds, 100 mile per hour winds in the channel, uh, I don't think there'll be any ferries running there, uh, it'll be very dangerous for anyone out at sea, large swells, and across that, across the south coast of England, southwest as well, severe conditions and not quite coming in land but that would be um truly truly devastating if we did see those 100 mile per, per hour winds come in land so um the icon run actually does pep up unice a little bit more with the winds 100 mile per hour gusts here but not coming quite as far inland um, only 50 60 70 mile per hour gusts widely inland in southern england so yeah have to exactly see uh, this. Uh, this is why I said we have to keep an eye on the track of this storm where it does go. Uh, and beyond that, things die down a little bit. Now, if we do have a look at the GFS run, have a look at precipitation uh, and wind gusts. Now, you can see Storm Dudley moving through tomorrow, snow over the high grounds of Scotland, but elsewhere, generally um, just rain. And then, as we see Storm Eunice arrive, you can see again through Friday, it's mainly a storm. Um, Many a storm across northern England. It does look like it doesn't had not updated the GFS run, unfortunately, for the 12Z today. If we do actually go back to the 6Z run then, have a look at what that is showing. You can see storm uh, Eunice there. Heavy snow across northern England into southern Scotland. So that's shifting that snow that much further northwards. Could be severe conditions from that once again. But that would bring those winds further on shore. So if we do have, have a look at the wind gusts. Now you can see for Storm Dudley, 60, 70 mile per hour, quite widely, even into central southern England as well. And then as we move through beyond that, through into Friday, 70, 80 mile per hour gusts, maybe even 90 mile per hour gusts, widely across central southern England. So it really is um, the lesser of two evils here, whether we want widespread heavy snow or... Um, or widespread significant snow affecting some ma many areas or whether we want these damaging winds now i think really even though snow can be very dangerous i think for for just for everyone i think it would be better if this storm tracked a bit further southwards the center went through southern england and we saw those really strong gusts in the channel and we just saw heavier snow across more of england um, and southern scotland um but uh yeah there isn't a good solution here. 
if the storm's further northwards, we see these exceptional wind speeds across southern England. If we see the storm further southwards, heavy snow um, and still very strong winds. So, yeah, we'll exactly have to see exactly how this does move. But I do suspect within the next day, next 24 hours, 36 hours, we'll have a very good idea on this exact track. Uh, it hasn't really formed yet. It's forming tomorrow, this um, low pressure system. So we'll have to see exactly how it does play out. But it's not looking good. So please do take the necessary precautions. So if you now do have a look at the GFS run, we'll go through this very quickly um, because things are not changing. Um, Dudley moving through there, that little low pressure system moving through northern Scotland. And then you can see the Storm Unique just getting caught up in that jet stream, that little buckle in the North Atlantic, really spinning up towards the UK. Severe impacts from this storm. And if we have a look at the United Kingdom, look, severe low pressure system. Uh, it could be seeing heavy snow, as I said, from that. And very, very strong winds on its southern flank. Now if I have a look at the European outlook and we just continue through. Just continuation of westerly winds. Could be seeing more named storms with this. Um, and yeah, not looking great. More named storms potentially with this with little low pressure systems. And then right towards the end of the run, we do see something a little bit interesting. A little bit towards Greenland, pushing that jet stream further south. And we do see a little bit of channel lows. And that could produce some snow into March. You can see we're in that minus five air. And we could be seeing little low pressure system interacting with that. Could be seeing maybe some more enhanced snowfall, similar to the Storm Unis, but a bit further southward. So we'll have to keep an eye on that. But it is right at the end of the run. So I don't want to put any, uh, any weight in that at all. Just still looking pretty westerly indeed. So if we do finish up, I have a look at the UK meta, uh, so the GFS ensembles. You can see temperatures generally around average, quite up and down, sort of a zonal sine wave pattern. Uh, you can see colder by the end of this working week, but not really getting that cold for a prolonged period of time. But temperatures generally around average in the longer term, maybe even slightly above average with quite a bit of precipitation. Uh, but precipitation will be higher further northwards. Um, and again, if we have a look at those wind speeds, you can see very, very drastic wind speeds on some of the runs, others showing very little. So it all depends on the track of the storm. So we'll have to see exactly how it plays out. But please do take the necessary precautions. Please do stay safe out there. Um, as I don't, I really hope we don't hear of any um, significant impacts or any fatalities from these storms. Um, because these these uh, these storms are going to be uh, severe and dangerous. So if you've got any plans through Friday in the morning, especially or Wednesday evening, I would advise you to, if they're outdoors, cancel them uh, and stay indoors. Um, and if they are anything where you've got to travel far, do make sure you take into precaution that there could be road closures, there could be disruptions to transport. Um, so please uh, do keep that in mind. So anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you all stay safe out there over the next few days. And I'll see you again for another video soon.